This is going to be the basic overview of the Pro Series Gravity Filler HMI. This would be the main screen you would see when you would initially power up the machine. Got a couple of things you can use here up along the top will be the little indicator of any sensors that are being made. As you can see right now, it pops up showing our in-feed count sensor is being made, or is at least seeing something in front of the sensor, or thinks it is. Uh, this is a real good uh, diagnostic tool right here, so you can see what the PLC is seeing without going too far. You also have your line backups up here as well. Uh, another thing you have would be your total production run. This would be how many containers this machine has spit out. Infeed count will be during your cycle. Uh, if you're using pin indexing, this number will go up as your infeed count sensor is reading. Uh, if you're using a star wheel, this number will go out as your machine is indexing bottles through. This will be the last cycle containers per minute. This will include any line backup delays or anything that you have there as well. So this will be a true number of what's coming out the end of the machine. Your fill cycle complete is just going to be your status right here. It'll say in cycle if, if you're actually running. Uh, you have a login for maintenance modes and uh, you can also get your inputs and outputs if you're trying to do any sort of diagnostics here and click back to return to main um, you have all your main pages that you'll use throughout here and your master switches down here along the bottom your fill cycle you'll toggle this off and on to actually start a cycle if you turn this on and everything's set up it'll just continue to run until you turn this off or you can turn it on and then turn it right back off again and it'll run just one cycle which is good for testing your fill heads this will turn your fill heads off or on your product supply this will turn your product supply off or on so that'll be whether you want to refill your tank or not your conveyor same thing an auxiliary output we'll use this sometimes uh, to, to run various auxiliary functions sometimes uh, digital pressure tanks uh, or other circuits like that most part that's off uh, starting kind of left to right here the CIP screen is going to be your clean in place so if you have CIP you can come into this screen here and you could toggle in click on here and set any set points that you would want to set uh, running a CIP we have a separate video on the actual setup of all of this but essentially you're going to program how long you want to delay the heads opening uh, and how long you would want them to stay open in, in between each one of those delays. So the CIP will essentially pulse the fill heads open and closed while running the CIP ball spray ball that's in the tank. Once you get those two numbers set, you just hit start CIP cycle and it takes off and it runs for the predetermined amount of run times you would like to have. You can cancel it at any point in time by pushing cancel CIP. You can go back to your return to main. Next will be your alarm screen. Green is good, means that you got no alarms. If it's flashing red, it'll list your alarms here. Your recipe screen would be the next screen over. So as you're setting yourself up with different containers, you can save up to 50 recipes here. So you can toggle through them and select which ones you would like, and you can name them independently here. So if you wanted to come back to this one, you could select a previously saved recipe and hit load for use now, and that'll bring up all of your preset timers and everything for you and get you real, real close. Uh, or you can come in and you can save a new file or you can override an old file and it tells you up at the top what's the last file that you actually loaded next screen will be for your ASU or automatic setup you click on that guy there it'll bring you to this screen we have an additional two additional videos on this as well 
but I'll go over them real quickly. Uh, if you wanted to do your automatic setup for your fill heads, you can do them all at once or you can do them one at a time. You can toggle your drip tray, your head dive, your locate, everything right here. But let's say I wanted to do head number one in a real basic circumstance, I would just click head one ASU, reset ASU, so this should be zeros. And then I'm gonna have a container under fill head one and I'm gonna push and hold this button. And the whole time I push and hold this, the fill head's going to stay open. Once I let go, it'll close and it'll populate a time right here. Once that one populates, if all looks good, I hit save AS1 only and it'll populate that new time here. And then I would go through and I would do that for every individual one. Once I save it, it populates it also on my fine tuning screen, which we'll get to next. If I were to go in and I'd want to set my automatic setup for my pin indexing, I would click pin index, index ASU. That brings me to this screen here. How I, I have a separate video for this, but essentially what I would do is I would put, I would set my index gates, my exit pin and my entry pin and my conveyor speed along with my in-feed count sensor where I need them to be mechanically. And then I would push all my containers up against my entry pin and I would come here, I would clear this. So this is zeros. I would want to make sure that under my setup that I program the correct number of bottles that I wanted to count, which is normally the same number as the number of fill heads. Once all that's good, I hit start ASU index. It'll do my index for me and then it'll populate a time. And I hit save if I'm happy with it and then I'm good to go. Coming back to here to return to main, after I would have done my my index or my ASU for my fill heads, I would come back to this adjust fill head screen to make any fine tuning adjustments. My time would have also been populated here and I can click it and increase or decrease as much as I would like. I can click here and I can just type in a hard number if I would like. I can also increase all or decrease all or I can use my calculator here, which I can use to calculate uh, how much my changes really need to be made. I can do this in grams or any other variant that I would like. I would just convert it to a number. So say I target was 2000 grams. I would put in what my actual fill was, which say was 1500 and then that would populate, after I hit save, it would populate my change that I wanted. I'm just in a simulation right now, so the numbers are a little, a little skewed of what they would be on your screen, but you can see what I'm going for. I can next over and I can see all my additional fill heads that are available as well. The next screen that I would see would be my preset screen. Click on this one. This is going to be where I can adjust all of my timers. This would be if I have a container available set up, uh, which would be just basically saying that, hey, I have containers that are ready to come into the machine. This would be the delay of how long a bottle had to sit in front of that sensor before the PLC registered it. My line backup on delay is going to be the same thing. This would just be the delay of how long a bottle has to sit there. Same thing with the in-feed sensor, no bottle, no fill delay. Just how long the bottle has to sit there before it registers. Exit gate duration, this will auto-populate after I ran my pin index ASU. This is how long it takes for the containers to leave my fill zone. Entry gate delay open timer, that's going to create the gap in between my bottles leaving and my new bottles coming in to allow room for my exit pin to close. Two seconds is the general rule of thumb there, but that can be changed wherever you would like it to be. In feed container count preset is gonna be how many containers you wanna count for every cycle, usually matches the number of fill heads. Next would be star wheel. If I'm running a star wheel indexing, I would populate here instead of on the infeed count. Delay head dive timer. 
This is going to be the amount of time after the containers index in that I want to wait before I bring my heads down to the containers. Head release up delay timer will be if I'm running, say, a bottom up fill. It'll be how long after my heads dive down do they wait before they start coming back up. Fill delay timer is going to be how long after my heads are initiated to dive down do I wait before I open the fill heads. New cycle restart delay. This is going to be how I'm going to slow this machine down if I'm overrunning, say, uh, a manual hand capping situation. This would be, it'll fill, it'll do all of the things, and then it'll just wait until it exits those containers. Delay exit retract in a new cycle. That'll be how long after I'm done filling the containers and I start to dive up, how long do I want to wait until I open the exit pin to let my containers go out? So this is usually helpful if you have really long fill heads that you're diving down inside the container and the containers are trying to leave before the fill heads are out all the way. You put a little delay here to help with that. Buffer tank float delay. This is going to be how long does my float in my tank have to read that I need product before it turns the product supply valve on. So this helps uh, eliminate sloshing in the tank. If you have, say, a large AOD pump that pulses product into your tank, this will help eliminate with that. Usually I'll set this to about a second. And go back to my main filler setup is going to be where I'm going to go to toggle on any of the options that I want on this machine. So if I want to toggle on certain fill heads, I can, or I can leave other ones turned off. These are master switches essentially. So before you're able to run an ASU or a manual toggle or anything like that, they have to be activated here. On the next screen, I have more fill heads and then I have my locate, my trip tray, head dive, fill hold, which is going to uh, be an option that is useful in some situations where you're gonna wait to actually start filling your containers until the float is made inside the tank. So essentially you will start every fill cycle with a completely filled tank. Supply hold is going to be we're going to wait until the fill cycle's over and our fill heads close before we start resupplying our tank. Indexing type, you can toggle this through the different styles of indexing. Head dive, you can also toggle through standard, off, or bottom up. Next is going to be for our count sensors. You can change these so if you do replace the sensor later on, uh, you can change whether it's a light on or dark on because some sensors don't have the ability to be switched with wiring. So you can do it here in the program. Same thing with our backup float. You can change it here if you needed to. Uh, containers available sensor, if you can want that to be off or on. We do not use dive head limits, so this is off. Uh, entry gate normal and exit gate normal. These can be toggled depending on where you have your, or what style sub bases you use in your valve bank. You want to make sure that when you press your e-stop button in, your indexing pins are retracting into their bodies, not extending out. So sometimes you have to switch these to invert to make that happen. Manual toggle is just what it sounds like. This is where you can go through for during your setup sequences. You can, uh, you can toggle your entry gate open or close, your exit gate open or close. Same thing with drip trays, head dive, locators. All that can be actuated here. Your conveyor is the only button in this manual toggle screen that when you leave this screen will stay latched in whatever mode you left it. So this, your continue, continuous conveyor running would just, your conveyor's always on. Conveyor auto, it'll shut off and on with your fill cycle. You next over, you can activate every fill head individually or all as a group. 